Everybody, it's uh, Christopher Dixieland Farm, and uh, wow, I didn't really plan any things to actually talk about here with my Brian Eno collection that I'm going to show you, so I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. How did I find out about Brian Eno? So I was a teenager in the 80s. I was uh, very much into the Velvet Underground. Uh, the Velvet Underground, it was 20 years old <laughs> by the time the CDs came out, right? And this was before the internet. And I was reading something, and Brian Eno said that uh, not many people bought the, the Velvet Underground and Eco, but anyone who did uh, went and formed a band. First time I heard of Brian Eno. And uh, Velvet Underground into the Lou Reed solo career. Lou Reed solo career. David Bowie's the producer into David Bowie. Brian Eno's involved with David Bowie. Second time. So, I started looking up Brian Eno. So, uh, Brian Eno's stuff was not available on CD at the time, only on vinyl, but that was okay because it was the late 80s, early 90s. You can get all this stuff dirt cheap. So, uh, being in New York metropolitan area, it wasn't super hard to get Brian Eno. I mean, it's not the most common stuff. I think he, the most he ever sold was 100,000 records, I think. I don't know. But, obscure enough, so... Not a fan of Roxy Music. Brian Eno was on the first Roxy Music album. These are his solo albums where he is singing, and I love them. And there's only four of them, and one of them I sold, but I reclaimed, uh, got his VCLT. And one of them I actually don't care about. I have on CD. So when we converted to CD back in that time, we would sell off the records again to kind of help finance stuff. So uh, Eno's Here Come the Warm Jets, so this is uh, the reissue here, uh, his stunning debut album. Brian Eno is not much of a musician or a singer, at least that's what he says. I happen to love his voice, and I happen to love his unschooled music ability. So Brian Eno is kind of known as being a producer, produced U2, Talking Heads, plenty of others, I believe. And uh, he was a pioneer of the synthesizer and using it, especially with non-waveforms, um, like just running things through the synthesizer, like a guitar or something like that, making interesting sounds. So synthesizer usually has like a tone, uh, saw, a sine wave or a saw wave or whatever, and you play that with the keyboard, right? And then you manipulate that and make it sound like stuff. But he wasn't limited with that. So his friend Robert Fripp, he would run through the synthesizer and then the synthesizer had different kind of filters and you can make waveforms affect those filters. So a lot of things are run through the synthesizer, which kind of is his genius. And th this is, uh, to me, just a stunning debut. Love this album, love it. I do regret selling my original uh, when I got the CD, but here it is back in the collection. I listened to this. Most of all, um, because it is so unique, it's going to sound slightly out of tune to you, maybe, and that's, I think, by design. It's just kind of uh, wonky sounding and on purpose. I, 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 it's, it's hard to describe the music, so I'm, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> but this album, Taking Tiger Mountain uh, by Strategy, is my favorite Brian Eno album. So you got the Warhol-esque uh, covers here. So Peter Schmidt apparently did the lithographs. This is uh, on an island. Uh, original American, um, what is it called? The Palm Tree, I guess, right? 1974, great. So uh, Phil Collins is on this. Phil Collins, uh, John Cale shows up, Robert Fripp on these, uh, these uh, solo recordings. Phil Manzanera from Roxy Music. Yeah, Robert Wyatt is doing percussion and uh, backing vocals. So, you know, just the cream of the prog, uh, obscure 70s rock, you know. Uh, this has a lot of intrigue in the song matters, almost like a spy thriller. Uh, Third Uncle, I think, was covered by Bauhaus. I was the first to play the Bauhaus. Okay, so China My China, Taking Tiger Mountain. Frenetic energy, uh, or 
I can't remember the name of the the orchestra. There's an orchestra, uh, something symphonic, symphonia, right? Oh, geez, I'm sorry, I can't remember. This was a band or an orchestra where they didn't really know their instruments very well, but they still played, and um, they show up on here. This has a a solo, a drum solo done on a typewriter, and it's incredible. So. Just so unique. What a great uh, album. Between the two, they're equal. They're equal. But this is my favorite. Though this is the one I listen to more, so I don't know what that means. This one I had sold, and I reclaimed it back in my local antique mall for $4. Thank goodness. Another Green World. This is... Got a what, Purple Island there. So Brian Eno gets into an accident, and when he's in the hospital, the radio is just too far away for him to actually get up and change, and it's done at a very low volume. And that's when he gets into the idea here of um, ambient music. So music that's just kind of in the background, you can listen to it or not listen to it, that is up to you. So. I'll, a lot of that interest comes in here, and then Brian Eno is known as the father of ambient music, and there are quite a few ambient passages here, just small little snippets of music that are just kind of pleasant and give you a, a sense of a soundscape, but not really too defined. So half the music, I think, is ambient, half of it is in, in singing. And this is, uh, it's not the commercial album, but this is his most successful uh, solo singing uh, album there I think on this are the descriptions of like yeah snake guitar uh, yeah John Cale's on this Phil Collins it's just interesting unique so when he runs things through the synthesizer what the sound is what maybe it's described as is the instrument so snake guitar and uh, windborne guitar windborne guitar hmm. Choppy organs, spasmodic percussion, club guitars, uncertain piano. These are the instrument names here. I'm sorry, it's very tiny and I'm middle-aged, so it's really hard to read even with the glasses on. If you are at all curious and you've never heard Brian Eno, this is the one to pick up. My first girlfriend lived in Epsica, New Jersey, which was a suburb uh, of Atlantic City. And we were at a barn, antique barn, and they had stuff, and they had 78s, and I bought 78s, and then they also had some LPs for some reason, and mostly junk. She was interested in junk. I went and I looked, and this record was there. This record had no reason to be in Upseek in New Jersey. It certainly had no reason to be in an antique uh, barn, and certainly they had no right to sell it to me for 50 cents. 801 Live, so uh, some band members from... Uh, Roxy Music, and it's really Phil Manzanera's group, and... They do a version of Tomorrow Never Knows, which is really interesting, and they do a version of uh, Babies on Fire here, so it's, uh, and he really got me, and Third Uncle. So this is uh, almost like a Roxy Music, you know, 801 Life. They had a, a, a couple of albums, I believe. I don't know if it was always Phil Manzanera. I never pursued 801. The one I'm missing is uh, Before and After Science, which is when... Brian Eno starts getting involved with Talking Heads. I have it on CD. I'm, no sense me showing you a CD because you don't care. This is the weakest of the singing albums to me. It is fine, but it is not as brilliant as the other three, or it's retreading ground, or it's a little too commercial. Um, not really, but a little too safe. Sure, that's fine. And way more of the ambient music. It's fine. I sold it. If I ever get it back for cheap, I would probably take it back. Some of you are going to get crazy seeing uh, original Antilles, so that's American, version of this great music here for $7 that I bought it. And this is just the greatest ambient album maybe of all time. And on the back here is how the music was made. So he had two, and this is how Frippertronics is done which Robert Fripp would use, he would play guitar, use this method to make these looping soundscapes. 
two reel-to-reel -reel recorders, instead of going take up on one reel, it would take up on the second reel, right? So it would be tape one to two, and then take up. And two playback head would feed back onto tape one with a delay. Crap. So sorry about that. So, uh, where was I? Yeah. So, the second tape player would feed back on the tape one, and because it's a physical format, right, and there's actual distance, there'd be a delay, and the delay would be slightly lower. So, let's say you play a note, da-da-da, 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 and then the volume was lower, so it would decay over time. This is a very simple uh, delay circuit, but, so Brian Eno puts in this, uh, a sequence into the synthesizer and the phone rings, just like I had happen right now. Freaky! So, phone rings, just like happened to me, right? He leaves, had this delay circuit on, resulting inside one of this album. When he came back and listened to the tape, it's like, this is great. So it was music, not even made by a human, present. Fits in totally with the concept. And then side three is uh, some of uh, classical pieces kind of run through this process as well. Uh, and just a beautiful album. I don't remember which one came out first. I'm gonna assume uh, maybe no pussyfooting came yeah, out first. Yeah, S same idea. This is with uh, with Fripp here. Got these halls of mirrors. Heavenly Music Corporation, Swastika Girls. Pretty much the same idea though recorded earlier with the uh, the Frippertronics and yeah, digital sequencer, tape recorder. You know, just the, the instruments are just as important as the music. Very good album, kind of pre what he was going to do with the ambient and then the ambient. And then we've got uh, Evening Star here. This is, uh, I don't know when this one was put out. Guitar, loops and synthesizers. Same idea with Fripp. Solid ambient album. Uh, music from airports. Is ambient 2. I have ambient 4. So ambient 4, uh, <laughs> the thing that he put on here is, he, 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 it, it's basically an out of phase speaker system. So basically how you would do quad, where it pulls out things that aren't quite in phase and then makes that play through for interesting effect. So while he only has one thing here, you could probably load up your surround sound and get the basic same idea. So a lot more instrumentation on here for an ambient album. Got uh, Daniel Lenoir doing live equalization. Hmm. Another solid ambient album. Then he, he had a bunch into the 80s, 90s, less interesting to me. And that's where I stopped with Eno. This is where we're going to stop. Did, did I explain this well enough? Sure. So all told, I spent nothing and these things are worth quite a bit more now. Holy crap, I, gotta, I just got to end this, man. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.